Hello friends and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about tread switching, broken up over two separate short videos. This first video is going to be about what tread switching is and why you might do it, how it works. If you know all of that and everything on this slide right now makes sense to you, you are good to go. You can move on to the next video if you're so inclined. That video is going to be about people that know what tread switching is, but you don't do it for whatever reason. Tread switching it's not even just a min-maxing thing. It kind of is, but it's also like fairly significant, as you'll see in this video. So it really is worth doing if you play any hero that buys power treads. Um, but if it's still a little intimidating, check out that video. We're going to go over an exercise that maybe it'll help you get into the habit. But for everyone else, let's get into this. We're going to explain this slide in a little bit. Let's start with why tread switching works. Percentages in this game for your health and your mana are preserved when stats change. So that could be your attributes, intelligence or strength, or it could be something like this energy booster, which just gives you flat mana. Now let's look at this exercise here. Let's say your total mana pool is 500. Your current mana, because you have used a couple spells, is 250. That means your percentage of remaining mana is 50%. Current divided by total. Easy math so far. Let's say you buy this energy booster. It is 250 mana. However, it does not just add 250 mana to both your current and total mana pool. It adds 250 mana to your total mana pool, and then it tries to preserve whatever your current percentage is. So here's our 750 max mana. We were at 50%, so the game will keep us at 50%. It'll bring us to 375. If you were already at 500 out of 500, 100%, and then you buy an energy booster, you will be at 750 out of 750. Whatever your current percentage of current mana to total mana is, when your stats change, it will keep the percentage and the current mana will reflect whatever that percentage is, whether you're going up or down. So then when it comes to power treads, you can switch between all three attributes. That means there are a variety of ways we can use this. Arguably, the most important one is to cast spells on intelligence treads because you're going to have a little bit more mana, and the end result is that you use less mana per spell cast. So let's say you don't power tread swap at all. Your total mana is 500. Your current mana is 500. You're at full mana. Great. You use 75 mana on some spell cast. I apologize for... This weird fraction this is like the easiest way I could get it in a PowerPoint. But you use 75 mana. That's what's happening here. And you end up at 425 out of 500. This is 85% of your current mana compared to your total mana. Now, because you didn't tread swap, that's just, that's just where you end up. Now, if you tread swap, so we're going to be at 500 intelligence while on agility treads. You swap to intelligence treads, so you get an extra 120 mana from that 10 intelligence. Because we're at 100% when we start, we're at 620 out of 620 now. We use 75 mana because the spell cost doesn't change. So it's 75. And we end up at 545 out of 620, which is 87.9% of our current mana compared to our total mana. And so when you switch back, oops, sorry. When you switch back to your agility treads, you actually end up at 439.5 out of 500 which is 14.5 mana saved. Whoa, that's crazy. Every time you tread swap, you save this amount. Now, it could depend on what your current versus total mana is, like maybe you have a bigger mana pool, maybe the spell's more expensive, stuff like that. That'll affect how much mana you save. You know, So it's not like every single time you do this, you save 14.5. In this particular example, you do save 14.5. Um, the number kind of varies. But 14.5 is kind of significant, you know? In this case, it means that every time you cast a spell up to five times, you have then saved enough mana to get another, you know, free spell cast off. It's not really free, but you save the mana by doing this trick. Now, mana is not the only case this works in. So let's take health, healing. If you're on strength treads, which gives you 200 HP from the 10 strength, let's say you're at 900 total health. You're sitting at 200 because you were just in a fight, and now you want to salve up, which will heal you 400. 
you end up at 600 out of 900, which is 66.7%. And again, you didn't tread swap at all, so you're just, that is where you're at. Now, if instead you first reduce your stats, your health, by going to agility. So first, here's our stats on um, strength treads. We move over to agility treads. So we drop down to 155.5 out of 700. Because this, I didn't put the percentage here, but this is actually about 22.2%. Uh, and so when we switch down, we reduce 200 health. The uh, current health matches. But it's okay because it's going to end up higher. We heal that same 400. And we end up at 555. This may look lower than this 600, but the percentage of what it is at is higher. So when you switch back to strength treads, you end up at 714 out of 900. Um, this being an extra 114.2 extra heal. That is a lot from your salve. And so this is why you'll see people... So there are other ways besides tread switching, but you might see someone backpack certain items or drop them before using a bottle or a salve. This is why. This is a lot of extra healing when you switch your stats around like this and play this weird numbers game. The last case is for when you take damage. It is generally better to be on strength treads. So let's say you're an agility hero. You're sitting at full health, and you see some spell coming in, and it's going to do 200 damage. You just take the damage, you don't tread swap, and you end up at 500 out of 700. That is 71.4%, and no tread swapping, so that's where we're at. Blah, blah, blah. Now this time, you see the spell incoming, so you're going to switch to strength treads. So we're sitting at 700. You see the spell coming. Uh-oh. Strength treads. Gain an extra 200 HP. We're sitting at full health. Now you still take that same 200 damage. But because we're at strength treads, we're now at 700 out of 900, which is a higher percentage than what we were before. So when we switch back to agility treads, we're actually at 544.4. 44 extra health you now have because you swap to strength treads. This is pretty good. That's like an extra auto attack or two, depending on the game, that it takes to kill you. So it isn't this like, one HP here, one mana here. It's like a sizable chunk in the early game. Now, a point of nuance for taking damage. Anytime you take magic or pure damage, it is better to be on strength treads. Technically, when you take physical damage, there is a threshold where being on agility treads to get that uh, extra little bit of armor is more efficient. But it varies depending on how much health you have and how much armor you have and so it's practically impossible and to very little benefit to memorize that chart uh, but it does exist actually i don't know if anyone has it out i did the math in the past um, i have it somewhere i don't they changed the armor formula it's a little different now but the general rule from that math is that it is just easier to just be on strength treads it will generally be better and there are only niche cases where being on agility treads for physical damage is better it's just easier make it easy on yourself strength treads when you take damage a few points to end this video tread switching only works for flat values so what i mean by flat value is that a salve heals 400 hp that is that's it that's what it does this spell does 100 damage those are flat values then tread switching is good. If it's a percentage, so say fountain. Fountain heals you a percentage of your health and mana. It doesn't, doesn't matter what tread switching, like any of the attributes you're on, won't matter. Because let's say like a 10% heal. It takes 10 seconds to heal 100% from zero. So gaining more or less health, like doesn't matter, 10%. Uh, so it's always the same. You don't need to tread switch. Then... The lower your total HP or mana pool is, the more important it is to tread switch. And along that same vein, the higher the cost, the spell cost, the damage, the heal is, it matters more to tread switch. You don't really need to remember those last two points, to be honest, though. Tread switching, when done correctly, is almost always good. I can't think of why it would be bad, but I'm going to cover my ass and say almost. It's always good to do, okay? Let's... I commit. It's always good to do, as long as you're doing it correctly. So, you don't really need to know, 
well, technically I saved a little less mana than if I had been here. You know, yes, it's a little less efficient, but it was still positively efficient for you. Like, it was, it benefited you to tread switch. So just do it if you can. Now, a couple general rules to make it easier. Be on strength treads when you're taking damage. I know we mentioned the nuance, but just strength treads is just easier to remember. So strength treads for any kind of damage. Anytime you heal HP or mana, just be on agility treads. Again, a little bit of nuance here. Technically, you can be on strength or agility treads when you are healing mana or intelligence or agility treads when healing health. But the common factor there is being on agility treads. And so you don't have to think about it. Just agility treads, always good for healing. And then finally, be on intelligence treads whenever you spend mana. There's no nuance to this. This is just always good. I can't think of a reason. Where I'm confident committing to this one. Be on intelligence treads whenever you cast a flat mana value spell, which is just about all of them, I believe. And that's that. Now you know why tread switching is good. Feel free to try it out in your games. If you're not confident in it, a few minutes of practice will really make this easy, I think. So go check out that next video for a practice idea or just press buttons in a lobby. That's fine too. And I hope you'll hope you'll tread switch next time you have a shot. It it really does help. I promise. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.